this live today will be purely about the benefits of the ketogenic diet and also the flaws of the ketogenic diet. Now, for anyone who doesn't know about the keto diet, the keto diet is basically where you drastically reduce your carbohydrate consumption and you massively increase your protein and your fats consumption. Now, what this does is it causes your body to then prioritize the usage of ketones. No, this is not very applicable to the vegan diet. I am plant-based. Uh, and so I consume a vegan diet, but you can consume a, a, a ketogenic diet whilst being vegan or plant-based, but it's a lot more difficult. It's a lot more difficult. The ketogenic diet is mainly for those who consume meat. And generally when they eat, a, uh, they follow the guidelines of a ketogenic diet, their meat consumption massively increases. So what tends to happen is so our primary food source as human beings is carbohydrates. It's what we have naturally evolved to eat. But what certain scientists found is that they use the ketogenic diet, which is where they massively increase the consumption of fats and, uh, and protein, and they started to feed this diet to epileptics. And they found that yes, 100% epileptics had a lesser likelihood of having an epileptic attack, but they also found that these individuals were also far, far more likely to lose weight. And from this study, we then get the ketogenic diet. Now, there are some really good books on this. I would really recommend uh, The Ketogenic Diet by Lyle McDonald, who has countless references in his books. He's very, very well-educated, very knowledgeable nutritionist. And he basically provides a guide on how to do the ketogenic diet, but also, as well as this, the pros and cons of doing so. Now, the reason why the keto diet has been popularized is because of its ability to shred fat, but it's really only applicable or the most beneficial for those individuals who are already about 15 or 13 percent body fat. If you're 13 or 15 percent body fat, it means you can really already see abs. So if you can't see your abs yet, it's probably uh, good to assume that the keto diet isn't quite ready for you yet. Now the reason why the keto diet is so effective, or it claims to be so effective, is because it modulates the secretion of insulin. Now insulin is secreted as soon as we start to digest carbohydrates. Um, now the problem with insulin is one, it causes the storage of fat. And those individuals who are less insulin sensitive, so those are individuals who don't exercise as much, and also those who are genetically predisposed to being less insulin sensitive, uh, you can almost correlate your insulin sensitivity to the ability or the amount of weight or fat that you store around your mid-region. So if you find that you centrally store fat, you store fat around your, your belly button, then it's more likely that you're less insulin sensitive, yeah, you're less insulin sensitive, which means you have to secrete more insulin to store fat. Or oh, sorry, more, you have to secrete more insulin to store your carbohydrates, which causes you to store more fat. So, the, what is basically happening during the keto diet is that these individuals are secreting less insulin, which means that they're less likely to store fat. But the other issue is that by going on a, a standard keto diet, because your insulin secretion is lower, you're also more, or you're also less likely to put on muscle because insulin also causes your body to increase the rate which it builds muscle. So we secrete a lot of insulin on a non-keto diet, so a traditional diet, we secrete a lot of insulin, especially in untrained populations. This causes an increase in the amount of fat that's stored, but an increase also in the amount of muscle which is created. This is why diabetics are, a lot of the time, especially for type, type two diabetics, a lot of the time they're at risk of what is called arterial hypertrophy, which is where their arteries grow too big, and that means that their blood pressure can increase, and it's because the insulin is causing their bodies to increase the amount of muscle around the arterial walls, so which isn't good. So, the main benefit of the keto diet is really, let's put the physiological effects aside that it improves insulin sensitivity, for example, because most people who are on a keto diet aren't at 13 to 15% body fat yet. So we need to kind of put this aside and say for the general populace, the main benefit of the keto diet is that it drastically changes their behavior. As soon as you start to reduce the consumption of a food group, that might be meat or fish or dairy, so you're on a vegan diet, it could be that you reduce your consumption of carbohydrates, which means that you're now on an Atkins diet or a keto diet. Whenever you reduce 
an entire food group, the consumption of an entire food group, people tend to eat less. So these individuals who are on a keto diet and saying it's completely changed their lives and that they've lost all this weight, the reason why is because they're consuming less calories and that is it. So when it comes to the keto diet, if you find it very difficult to traditionally diet, if you find it difficult to count your calories and you want a general rule of thumb, then you'll probably find the keto diet works for you and you lose more weight. But bear in mind that you'd also find the same effect if you were to go on a whole food plant-based diet or an Atkins diet or a raw food diet or something like that. As soon as you drastically change your dietary habits and you really refine the foods that you can eat, you're, you're naturally going to start to eat less foods, all right? So that really is the, the main benefit of the keto diet is it takes uh, generally people who are so poorly disciplined, who need a general rule of thumb to follow, which is really, really simple to follow, and in doing so, they reduce their consumption of, of um, carbohydrates and calories, and therefore, they lose more weight. Now, the issue with the keto diet is that naturally, as people, yes, consume less calories, their consumption of saturated fats and animal products goes through the roof. Like I said, it's very, very difficult to consume a keto diet on a plant-based diet, because plant-based diets tend to be very, very high in carbohydrates. You can lose weight and you get ripped on a, on a, on a plant-based diet, but some people would prefer to, to do it on a keto diet or a meat by consuming meat, right? But the issue is, once again, the, the rates of inflammation in your body will increase. Your predisposition to diabetes and heart disease and cancer will also increase. So the keto diet, even if you wanted to do it you know, at all, it is probably more of a short-term solution to you losing weight. Your breath will stink as well, and the toilet will really stink <laughs> as you start to consume all, the, all, all that meat and reduce the consumption of uh, fruits and, and possibly even vegetables. The other issue is that because you can't consume that many carbohydrates, your consumption of fruit will drastically reduce. Fruit protects us from cancer, protects us from diabetes, metabolic diseases, heart disease. So you're, you're really, I suppose, exchanging um, a beach body for your health, which isn't a good thing to do in my opinion at all. My advice would really be to stick to a whole food, plant-based diet as much as you can. If you want to consume meat, go ahead. If you want to consume fish and dairy, go ahead. But do it as it's traditionally supposed to be um, used, which is as a flavoring. You know, it's, it's only recently since the since World War Two, um, and the I suppose the counter response to people uh, having to ration their food that food production has gone through the roof, which means that people are consuming intensively farmed uh, meats and and um, dairy and fish far more than they ever have done before. So. This, you know, the, the way that we eat meat today has probably only really been around for 70 years, especially for people on the lower, lower socio-economic ladder, those who have less money. For um, them to be consuming meat at such a high rate is really unheard of. You go to any country in the world and most of the time you'll find that poorer people tend to consume less meat because it's far more, um, it's far more intensive when it comes to the amount of the amount it costs the environment, the amount it costs monetarily as well to, to actually, you know, farm a pig or farm a cow it requires far more land, far more resources. So poor people around the world tend to eat more, or sorry, more, more plants and less, uh, less meat. So my advice would be to stick to a majoritively uh, plant-based diet. If you want to consume meat, or dairy or fish, then do it as a flavouring. So like spr sprinkle it on or have it as a, a little side or something like that. But don't just whack a whole piece of meat and fish in your plate. But that was the Ask Girl for Mika. Uh, what I'll do is I'll start to do more Ask Girls um, Instagram Live, especially if you guys have any questions. And if you do have any questions, if you do want to for me to film a video response um, to any of your questions that you might have, then all you need to do is DM me and I will do one straight away. Thanks for watching.